This is the Orion 10DT CRT TV DVD combo unit. Screen size is about 23 centimeters or nine inches to my eyes. We'll confirm that when we go inside. The tube is almost perfectly flat. If you looked at it in a photo, you would swear that it's perfectly flat, but it is curved on the X and Y axis. Right now I've got Predators playing on DVD. This thing's made in the year, about the year 2003. It's got the silver coloring of the, the 2000s that TVs pretty much universally went to. I am missing the original remote, which is on screen. Now this is out of the instructions for the TV. It doesn't actually tell you in the instructions what the model number is for the remote. So that makes it difficult to find a replacement. Here's an actual real picture of what the remote appears to be like. So what I've had to do in the meantime to try and operate the TV to its full capability is go through boxes and boxes of remotes to no avail because none of them work on the Orion. Then I headed to the universal remotes and spent hours trying to figure out what the code for this TV was. And I tried all the Orion codes, Sansui and other brands. What I did in the end by using this Avico universal remote, it's probably the best one I've got. And these are just pickups from televisions over the years. Looking up the code list on the net. If you go to the DVD section, forget TVs, Go to DVD and you can see Orion there, 137, and that code worked. So I've got enough control on the television to bring up the on-screen menu, which it does have. On the front, power on and off, infrared receiver, volume up and down, channel up and down. Then you've got your DVD controls, eject, stop, play, rewind, fast forward. Headphone jack and a set of RCAs, and I think that's AV1 input. Teletext as well. Dolby Digital, what's going on there? Compact disc, we'll have to try a compact disc in a moment. Now, believe it or not, I think this thing is stereo. The specs for the TV say it's got two speakers. They're not saying that it is exactly stereo well they might be implying it but i've got a feeling that it is and i'm going to test that more thoroughly out it's got two speakers inside let's have a look around the back there's a region four symbol the manual states that the dvd player only plays region four discs which australia is a part of and predators is a region four version down at the connectors I hadn't already, I haven't yet mentioned that it's got a SCART and that's what I got excited about. RF of course, output, even a little nine inch TV has got stereo output and RCA form and also digital audio output that can output Dolby Digital from Dolby Digital encoded sources. And there's also the DC input jack, which is, well, it's hard to see in the light. DC 12 volts with polarity type there, so you can run it portably. The AC leads hardwired in. There's a couple of tabs out there, so you can wrap power cable around, a generous amount of spacing to wrap up most of that lead. A aerial holder to put your rabbit ears into, and also an alcove of sorts to handle the television by and carry it around. Let's have a look inside. That's a lot of screws for such a small television. All off the back to get that shell off the back. Hey, we're inside. Look at our anno cap mounted to the side of the tube. Speaking of the tube, it is Orion and it's 22, A22 centimeters in size, made in Malaysia. Orion staying true to form using Orion. I like that there are speakers on both sides, confirming. Got a speaker on each side, fair size too. I'm hopeful that it is true stereo. Tiny little neck board. We've got a multi-layered double-decker bus system with that power supply board on top. 
going down to our main chassis board and then in the metal in that caged off section will be the DVD assembly probably some PC DVD drive essentially and they're all basically the same thing aren't they that's the tour of the inside it's a bit different isn't it? it reminds me of some playset of Lego or something like that TV's back on let's eject the tray Seems to take a while to eject this tray. I need to push it a couple of times to get it open. Come on. There we go. You'll notice that the tray has the area for 8 centimeter discs. Don't have anything to test the 8 centimeter capability of the TV. I've got layer section here on the Saturn. This is a straight copy of that game. It has Redbook audio track, so it should act as a audio CD for us. I may need to press play and it'll go to its DVD splash screen I think from here yeah that's the that's built into the television DVD video splash screen let's see if it's got an audio section let's see if it's got any particular menu for that yeah it's recognizing it audio CD oh yeah it's got a track list that's okay volume up see that OSD nice well there you go to play audio CDs and CDRs as well it recognizes the CDRs stop and eject slowing down the disc there we go Let's test the capabilities further. This is Doctor Who on DVD, Region 1. Somewhere on the back there. Region, region 1, colour NTSC. All right, let's get disc 2. So this player is meant to play Region 1 and that's it. It states it in the manual. Region 1 player. So we've, I mean, sorry, Region 4. It's, it plays Region 4, it's Australia. But I've got a Region 1 disc, which is USA. Let's see what it does. Oh, there you go. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? It's not like when you put it in your Mac computer or your computer that gives you like five tries, five, five opportunities to change your region code on the drive. We are well and truly in play all. Region one disc is working. It would appear that the TV unit in question is multi-region, not restricted to just one. I've always felt that region locking is restrictive con to consumers. So Orion, I think, is just dotting the I's and crossing the T's, but actually making the unit compatible with all regions because hey, at the end of the day, they want to sell players. They don't sell discs. It's good for us, good for them. Uh, this is a test the TV won't pass, I don't think. Blade on VCD. The manual for the television states to basically, or to paraphrase, do not play VCTs, photo CDs, and a few other things because it could delete the content on the discs, which is a load of rubbish because this is a CD DVD player, not a burner, and these sort of discs, this VCD is a press disc, not a recordable disc, so there's no normal way for that to be deleted, as they say. Now, this can't work. No way. Well, VCD just worked, but we'll see what happens. I'll be shocked if it did. I'll be shocked if this worked. Incorrect disc, there you go. Oh well, we tried. Out you come. A quick show of the menu system. Oh, 
Oh. The menu system. Oh, it might be that the... Oh, 16 by 9? Wow. I think I've just stumbled across the DVD player's own menu system. This is different. This is different from the TV's menu system. It's it's truly like there is a separate, there is actually a complete DVD player inside the television doing its own thing. Well, let's exit. Let's get out of, let's get out of, yeah, back to regular television. And then we'll go on to AV. Come on, AV2. I'll give you a quick look. Channel setup. You can obviously, oh, you can tune your channels in on the RF channels. Picture, contrast, brightness, color, sharpness. It's also got tint, I think, for NTSC as well. Oh, we can also do PAL NTSC auto. Nice, nice. Just the basics, but you need a remote to access these. You can't access this basic menu without a remote of some sort. This is a PAL Super Nintendo, a one-chip variant with Bubsy in the cartridge slot. Hooked up to the TV via composite on AV2, it turns out that AV2 is the front input, making the SCART AV1. We'll turn the console on, and no surprises at all. PAL game, PAL system, television sold in a PAL country, so no surprises there. Bubsy looks fine, looks good. Let's advance the test. Now the true test begins. The most important test is whether the TV actually displays RGB through its SCART port. There's a good chance that it will. Orion, like TIAC, is considered probably a cheapo brand, but many Orions in Australia have SCART sockets like TIACs, perhaps not as many. You can see a review of an older Orion I did in the past, a big 80 centimetre, which does a good job of displaying RGB, and I'm hoping the tradition continues here with the Super Nintendo right now. So let's turn the console on. We're in AV1 this time. Now, whether or not the camera picks it up or not, it's actually looking more vibrant and colorful than it was in Composite. So it's definitely in RGB, even though the scan lines are pretty much non-existent on such a small compressed screen. It's definitely in RGB and looking better than Composite. So big tick to the Orion, but we've got to keep testing. We've got to try the NTSC signals now. NTSC Sega Saturn via Composite Video into the front of the TV. We have come into a hitch. It's black and white. Assuming that everything is working as it should be, this is peculiar. Even if we put color mode, it's already on auto. Pal, okay, still black and white, fair enough. It's an NTSC system. We're going to NTSC 4.43, still results in a black and white picture. What we might have here is a situation that this NTSC 4.43 is in fact a standard used to play NTSC tapes on PAL machines, PAL VCRs. This could be a carryover from the VCR days ingrained in this television. Whereas the DVD is probably encoded in component or RGB and avoids this problem altogether. What I need to do is hook up the pattern generator so I can get more specific NTSC signals into the television to see what it'll do. Right now, the pattern generator is hooked up and it is generating an NTSC 4.43 signal, which is in color and displaying correctly. NTSC J signal is coming out of the generator now and that's what would be coming out of the Saturn so the Saturn's not at fault, it's simply 
means that the television only likes NTSC 4.43 and not other variants of it. NTSC M, there's a PAL signal. We'll get the TV back onto auto. Yeah, so the PAL's okay. PAL M, no. PAL N, no. PAL 60's all right. C cam, that goes all right too. Well, while we're here with the pattern generator, let's have a look at some patterns. Color bars are up, and that's very bright and punchy. I've turned the brightness up a little to get a better grayscale result. The blacks are a little bit too sort of crushed. Crazy thing is there's plenty of room for the contrast to go. It's only at, at the midpoint. Like, wow, you can really push it, push it up to zing. Let's not go too far with it. Let's just go back to zero. Moving on. Oh, no, I want to stick with PAL. Silly. White screen. There's our gray scale. And our crosshatch, and that's quite good. <clears throat> that's that's pretty good. It's very square and it's not tilted, thankfully. We remember those Panasonics and the JVC monitor, all those little nine inch ones I reviewed over the last few months and they're always slanted clockwise slightly. Well, this is better and this is not even a professional monitor. Credit due to Orion. Geez, even that's pretty good as far as being um, consistent with one another. It, it's rare to see a set that will be spaced evenly. You can see the gaps between the threes. You can see the threes and the gap on the edge is even pretty much throughout all of them. So that's quite, it's quite well done. Even the top of the big circle, bottom, top and bottom are pretty well centered. So that's a, that's a bloody good effort for default, factory default. I promised I'd test the TV for its stereo capabilities. Right now, I've got the sound out of a PC into the front of the television. The black is the left channel, the red is the right channel. I'm on YouTube with a stereo testing, a left and right speaker testing program, and I'll start that very shortly. Warning, this video contains flashes and moving images. Left channel is going right now. Now I'll just pause it for a moment and tell you that the television is actually quite clever. So you've got sound coming out right now on the left side. If you take that red plug out, the TV can actually detect that. And then what it does is it takes that left channel sound and spreads it to the other side. So it's in a mono form, but coming out of both speakers. If you plug it back in, it'll revert to being just the left side. So that's very clever. It knows if it's getting stereo or mono. So left side is tested right now. It's coming out. And then right, the right side's going down. I can distinctly hear the difference coming out over the other side right now. So the television is definitely performing in stereo, thankfully. Unusual for such a small television. PlayStation 2 SCART RGB. It's a PAL console forced by the mod chip to be NTSC everywhere. The game is the NTSC version and it's looking good. It is looking good. Very pleased with it. Yeah, man, looking sharp, looking bright, looking punchy. A very impressive TV considering it's a cheap brand and it's only a portable television basically made for going on holidays in camper vans and caravans it performs marvelously well it does have a close relative in america it's another model of orion it looks very similar and you can see on the back that there is an area where the scart would be if it had it but unfortunately as we know scart is virtually non-existent in the united states of america most regrettably as for other Orions in the range, take a look at this flyer 
from Castell here in Australia as to what other models are available. This is the Orion PDF, two pages, which shows seven different models of television, all portable to some degree. One is an LCD, six of CRTs. The second page has the specs and reveals that five of the seven have SCART connections. The one in review here today is the 10DT, which is on the right, middle right, with the two parrots on screen. The one below it, and we're going to go in a clockwise motion going downwards and around, is the VCR version essentially of what I've got. It does not have SCAR, however. The next one at the very bottom in black, more of an old school style, is a bigger 34 centimeter TV. It too does not have SCAR, so it's a lame duck. The next one to the left is the 14 VDT, a bit bigger, with SCAR, with DVD and VCR functionality. The one above it, again, slightly bigger at 48 centimeters, SCAR, TV and VCR. And then finally, probably the pick of the bunch is the 21 FVD with the kangaroo road sign on the screen. 51 centimeters, TV, DVD, VCR and SCAR. Finally, it's the LCD. Less said about that, the better. However, it does have a SCAR connector. It gives you a good idea of what Orion had at this time. I was excited when I first saw this combo unit. It has lived up to all my expectations, if not surpassing them. My only complaint would be that the NTSC playback for composite video is not true NTSC playback. It seems to be the old pseudo standard for NTSC tapes on PAL systems. So if you want to play your NTSC consoles in composite video, it's not going to happen. Fortunately, you can go to RGB and bypass that issue altogether. My other little concern is that I had trouble getting the satin hooked up in RGB on the TV. PlayStation, no problem. Super Nintendo, no problem. Dreamcast, no problem. I think the problem is that the television's fairly dependent on the blanking or the switching at pin 16 in the SCART. It will need to have the correct voltage to switch in to RGB. You can't manually select it with the remote on the television. You've got to have the right voltage present to make the TV go into RGB. But when it does, you'll be pleasantly surprised and quite rewarded. The feature set is very good. You've got two inputs, AV1 and AV2, SCART and Composite. Then you really have a third set with the built-in DVD player for a nine inch television. That's a large amount of inputs to have. It's stereo, which is quite unusual. It's got SCART RGB, which is the most important thing of all. The geometry is really good. The image looks great. It's bright, it's punchy. It's got a DVD player if you really want it. For me, I'd prefer not to have the DVD player at all and have a smaller television. Same size screen, but smaller unit in overall size. My theory is Given that this television is intended for portability, probably camper vans and caravans like I mentioned before, this is not a daily driver. 48 weeks of the year you'll be at home looking at your big television on the wall in your lounge. Then when you go on holidays for a couple of weeks, you might watch a movie here and there on this particular sort of television, which means ultimately, that a lot of these little portable ones have probably done very few hours. I suspect this has been hardly used at all. How else could it be so bright and punchy? It's the best looking CRT I've seen in a while. Certainly in this size category, highly recommend it. Big thumbs up to the Orion. Moves the Orion name up in the rankings much higher. Do look out for it, do hunt it down. You will not be disappointed if you get one with the image quality that this one has. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. See you next time.